All right, let's take a look at our second type of differential equations, and this deals with the simple case of growth and decay. So what I want to start with is working through these three differential equations and solving them analytically, which of course means algebraically. And these are all quantities that change at a rate proportional to the existing amount of that quantity. So for example, our quantity here is P, which changes at 2% of P. The quantity here is m, which changes at a rate 3 times m. And here on this one, you can actually rewrite this as dy dt equals negative 1 third y. And then you'll see that y changes at a rate of negative 1 third times the amount present. So for each of these, we can go ahead and do separate, integrate, and solve. <clears throat> so to separate, I need to divide by p and I need to multiply by dt. Make sure that you leave your constant up on the right because if you bring it down below, you create a chain rule situation with a natural log integration, and we always like to avoid any extra work. So here, dp over p will integrate to the natural log of the absolute value of p, and then here, 0.02 dt integrates to 0.02t, and of course, plus c. And I should have put in my integral symbols here so you knew you were integrating. All right, now I need to solve for p because I've separated and I've integrated, but I have not yet solved. So the solving means I need to exponentiate both sides at the base of e, and I'm composing logs here. So I end up with the absolute value of p equals, and I'm going to split this um, exponent into two parts. So I have e to the c, e to the 0.02t. These are multiplied together. And then I can rewrite my constant e to the c as a new constant a, which will absorb the absolute value sign, the positive or negative. So my final answer here is going to be p equals a e to the 0.02t. All right, let's look at the next one. And here we are going to start again by separating our variables by multiplying by an m and by multiplying by a dt. Once again, I left my constant up on the right. I now need to integrate both sides. And on the left, I get the lm, ln of the absolute value of n equals 3t plus c. I now need to exponentiate both sides of the equation compose inverses on the left to get the absolute value of m is equal to, and I will split the exponent so that I have e to the c times e to the 3t. I'm now going to rewrite e to the c as a, which is a new constant that absorbs the positive or negative sign needed to make the equation work, and I'm left with m equals a e to the 3t. My final uh, problem here, I already rewrote this so that I have dy dt equals negative one third y. So I'm going to separate my variables to get dy over y equals negative one third dt. And I'm going to integrate both sides of the equation to get the natural log of the absolute value of y equals negative one third t plus c. And of course I will exponentiate both sides of the equation compose inverses on the left to get the absolute value of y equals, and I'm going to split the exponent to get e to the c times e to the negative one third t. And then of course I will rewrite my e to the c as an a, which will absorb the positive or negative sign from the left. So y equals a e to the negative one third t. And what you should see is that for all three of these equations that started out in the same format, they all ended up in the same format with the ending variable, the, the loner variable on the left being the variable from your numerator in the differential, um, in the Leibniz notation. I have an A as my initial value in all three, and then I have an E raised to the constant that was in my original Diffie Q my constant that was in my original Diffie Q, and finally my constant that was in my original Diffie Q times t, which of course was the variable from the denominator of the Leibniz notation. So the original Diffie Qs all have the same basic form, dy dt equals k times y, where k 
is a constant. So what types of equations do we typically see, or what types of scenarios do we typically see in this format? Well, exponential growth, which is the most obvious because they all look like exponential growth equations, but that's, for example, the growth of a bacteria culture, the growth of human population, animal population, continuous compounding. This is generally to do with um, referring to money, um, exponential decay, carbon dating, half-life problems, demand for precious resources, dissipation of drug concentrations in the bloodstream, and the absorption of light.